we're, we have some uh, shared history and experience. And uh, for me still, I take inspiration from the struggles of the Vietnamese people and of the Cubans uh, as set an, setting an example of resisting U.S. colonialism. What Share some, some thoughts you have uh, about Vietnam and Cuba. You know, coming of age, um, um, political age, um, in, in the 60s, I feel so blessed by our movements at that time, which I was in, deeply involved in. And um, we learned about decolonization. We learned about colonialism, decolonization. We, um, it was, of course, the, you know, the Vietnam War getting worse and worse and worse and worse, more and more U.S., 500,000 probably in and that um, admiring the Vietnamese resistance so much and, and Cuba's resistance. Um, and um, then, you know, then in the, um, that after 75, we went straight into, you know, this sort of uh, undercover, um, they had covert actions after that since the public was, you know, dead set against US uh, imperialism for a time. Uh, but the covert action started in Afghanistan, you know, where they uh, started building up these, um, you know, these uh, uh, war chiefs, you know, that finally led to, well, devastation, almost total devastation of Afghanistan today. And um, and we had um, the um, Contras in Nicaragua, you know, which I was very much involved in opposing and um the Reagan administration also overthrowing the government of Grenada, which was such a, a wonderful model, you know, for the Caribbean. Um, so it's, you know, just, just a devastation of, um, of those uh, movements. And then they move on to um, recolonize Africa, you know, without settler colonialism, but basically controlling the economies uh, and and creating wars, you know, just to keep weakening them, you know, it became obvious that with the Congo in the early 60s that this was on the agenda of the imperialist powers. And then it got to be the United States that was acting on their behalf, on the behalf of the West. And we see that now, you know, wanting to go uh, destroy China. I'm sorry, you know, um, this is not a possibility. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> Any circumstance. What are you thinking? <laughs> How many times do you have to learn this? And yeah, they're going to get us all nuclear blasted. I, um, and, you know, this, this thing in Ukraine is just uh, another U.S., you know, a U.S. intervention that led up to that invasion. People in other countries, I mean, they're not lovely people, but they don't want to take it anymore. You know, Russia doesn't want to take having U.S. bases on its border, you know, circling it. And they've circled China with uh, military bases now. And it, it's, you know, we have to we have to include this in our movements um, if we're ever going to change anything here. And I don't see it. It's kind of separate movements, anti-imperialism and, you know, civil rights and um, and. Uh, labor rights and all, they're just so separated and um, not by all, but you know, the movements are, and uh, I don't have a recipe for exactly how we would integrate it and make it a huge mass movement, but we did that in the 1960s. We were also dealing with civil rights. We didn't abandon it, you know, when we were fighting against the, you know, Vietnam War. What a perfect conclusion because, um... You just very perfectly stated the purpose of the June 14th webinar, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> which is to help overcome that separation and right. that confusion. <laughs>